Hey, this is Mo. Welcome back to Philly Changer Chats. I'm here with James and David, the founders of Bamboo Wi-Fi. So welcome, guys. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Thank Hi, you for having us. Yeah. Um, doing really good. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Okay. Why, why Bamboo Wi-Fi? Um, why the name Bamboo, or why uh, are why, we? Why Why are you endeavoring to create like a different kind of internet? Uh, well, because we see that. Um, the way things are done right now is not the way people use the internet nowadays, right? Like everyone does everything on their devices, on your smartphone, on your iPad. So to be tethered, to be stuck with a wired cable modem in your house, it, it doesn't seem necessary anymore when with the technology that's out there today, we can build a wireless network that covers the whole neighborhood. So you can use it in your house and you can walk around and you know, not have to be stuck there. Okay. So, you know, with all these kind of new technologies, like we're always wondering, you know, like what about the security of it? So this is a, like a little bit different. So um, you know, can you talk about that a bit? Yeah, the security is, it's a better level of security than you actually have in your home Wi-Fi router. Um, it's more similar to the security that you'd have over your cell phone network. Um, you, you know, like when you're on Wi-Fi at your house, you're still going over a signal. It's still out there. So someone that was capable of, say, hacking it, they can hack your home Wi-Fi um, more easily than they can hack our Wi-Fi. Really? Yeah. Uh, we use a, a uh, it uses a system called Air Marshal, okay. um, which kind of looks for like rogue attacks on the Wi-Fi and actually eliminates them from accessing the network. So it can recognize when someone that doesn't belong on the network is on the network and just kind of push them aside. Okay. Wow. That's uh. The, well, I mean, not that I understand all the technicalities of that, but no, it's it's good to know because I think like right now people are yearning for an alternative, and right. and this is pretty great. Um, so you mentioned. Uh, net neutrality a little mm -hmm. bit like so you know we just had a big win <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, how has that affected you guys um, are you like yes and no um, I think I'll say first that we guarantee net neutrality so a lot of the reason that the net neutrality debate came up was because certain internet providers wanted to no longer provide that. They wanted to make people pay more for certain types of content. So okay. it was always a fight between the desires of the customers and the people providing the service, okay. which is, again, kind of the crux of the problem of this. So our thing has always been, we guarantee it. It doesn't matter what the regulations are. It doesn't matter how things change or what the rulings from the FCC are. This is something that we know our customers want, and therefore we guarantee it. So in one sense, it doesn't change. Um, you know, those principles are the principles that, you know, we have stood by before this decision happened. So we think, you know, that they're good. Mm -hmm. But um, to ask whether it changes what we're doing, it really doesn't because we've yeah. always been committed to it. It's actually how we started the whole dialogue of, of building the network in the first place was a conversation about net neutrality. Um, and I mean, the net neutrality thing, like the ruling is great, but you, you know Comcast and Verizon, they're going to fight it. I mean, it's not going to be done mm -hmm. for years. And within that time frame, while they're kind of figuring it out, we're always is going to be net neutral. I mean, it doesn't. It, it doesn't make a difference to us. Like we, we have no reason to throttle or to fast lane anything. We just want people to be able to get on the internet and not have to worry about oh, did my router go down or is there a cut in the cable or oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm listening to Pandora while I'm doing the dishes. I got to go walk the dog. I don't want to have to switch to my cell phone. I want to stay on my Wi-Fi. So we're going to be able to do that for them. They'll be able to go and stay on the same Wi-Fi that they're using in their house and still walk around the neighborhood. Go from like, you, know, you live in Northern Liberties, right? Oh, I'm going to go to Bantai for, for lunch today. I can stay on my Pandora on my Wi-Fi while I'm walking there. So yeah, that, just to add on a little bit to that, it's one of those things that you won't realize how silly it is until something new comes along, but you pay twice for the internet. You pay for your home internet subscription mm -hmm. and you pay a data plan on your cell phone. So you're paying twice for the same thing every day. And, and these are real bills for a lot of people, you know, yeah. $100, another $100. So our network, anywhere within that network, it's mm -hmm. one subscription. You're always on the same internet. Um, and so, you know, I mean, it's, it's very cost competitive at the same time and it consolidates the market in a big way. Wow, this is this is this is great. Uh, I, um, without knowing a lot coming into it, it sounds like you guys are like kind of 
revolutionizing the way that we actually interact. You know, once we build it, we're really convinced people will get it. And, and we really think our, our one of our biggest challenges is that first hump. Can we build the first pilot zone? And then once we yeah. do, we think people will see, you know, how much better it really is. Yeah, we need to we need to build it to to prove it, right? Like right yeah. now it's it's just a concept. Um and I told James a story one day about how like um you know, I can say I'm gonna build a rocket ship and take you to the moon, right? We know that the technology exists to build a rocket ship. We know that we can do it, but at, at, at that point, I'm just a guy telling you I'm going to yeah, do Yeah, you got to put your right? hands on it. But if <laughs> I build the rocket ship and I bring you to it and say, hey, look, there's the rocket ship. Get on. Let's go to the moon. Then, you know, you trust that a little bit more. So that's why it is really so important for us to just get the pilot zone built, show that the concept can work. Mm -hmm. um, and then people, uh, we feel people will, will just, they, they won't even understand how they lived without it before. You know, like, yeah. oh, my God, I can't believe I had to, to you know, use my cable modem to get online. And that's <laughs> an important thing is that we're, we use technology in a very important way, but the technology that we're using works already. We're, we're not building something that doesn't already work. It works in places like if you go to a large university campus or a large complex, they use these kind of networks. The technology is out there. You know, it just needs to be developed in a way that you know is for everybody. Well, yeah, it needs to be applied yeah. into the scenario <laughs> that we're applying it to. Like, like, mm -hmm. like James said, it's already it already exists. Like, it's not we're not revolutionizing the technology that's already been done. We're just taking it and applying it to the scenario of let's build a network that works throughout a whole neighborhood. Awesome. Well, wow, it, I, I could talk about this forever. <laughs> so can we. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but we have to wrap up. Okay. Um, there's, uh, there's so much more information. We'll share all of that with everybody uh, when we're sending this out. But thank you guys so much. Thank you. For thank you for in. having thank us. Thanks a lot. Cool.